Less than two months after the shooting of crime boss Joseph Colombo in June 1971, a member of the Gallo crew provided the authorities with a fascinating insight into the mind of Crazy Joe Gallo. Let's check it out. I'm James Gladwish and welcome to OT Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the thoughts of Joe Gallo and the Gallo crew after the shooting of mob boss Joseph Colombo. Following the shooting of Mafia boss Joe Colombo, the FBI gathered information on the state of the Colombo family as well as the rebellious Gallo crew. One confidential informant believed to be a Gallo crew member provided detailed information on these subjects to the authorities. The informant would talk about how many erroneously thought that Crazy Joe Gallo was behind the shooting of Joe Colombo. As one FBI file dated 10th of August 1971 states, the source said, in his opinion, even though it is evident many in the Colombo family are carrying guns, this does not mean a war is about to break out. The source believes there are certainly people who are associated with made guys in the Colombo family who believe the newspaper nonsense that Joe Gallo was behind the shooting of Joe Colombo and may have others slated to be hit. As we see from the file, the informant states that it is just newspaper nonsense connecting Joe Gallo with the Colombo hit. Although he does state that some mobsters may believe this. Later, in another part of the file, the informant states that although there is talk of another war breaking out between the Columbos and the Gallo crew, he doesn't believe this will happen. The informant then tells the FBI about Crazy Joe's views regarding Cosa Nostra and the majority of made men. The FBI file states, Gallo has also reportedly been heard to state that many made guys are overrated by people, including law enforcement, as being savvy or sharp guys while actually many made guys are dumb bastards. As we can see, according to the informant, Joe Gallo believes that many people give made guys too much credit for being savvy or sharp, including law enforcement. But in reality, most are not actually that bright at all. It could be said that Joe Gallo, who was a made man himself, but no longer considered himself part of the Colombo family, is just bad-mouthing the Cosa Nostra life he was once in. But he may well have a point. The file continues. Gallo indicates that in The Thing, all that is really needed is a boss with brains. Then if he is smart, he will surround himself with very tough, very loyal, very obedient members of his crew. And if they are at the same time a little short of brains, so much the better for the boss and his chances of survival. In this part of the file, the informant has relayed how Joe Gallo thinks a successful Mafia boss operates, essentially stating that a smart boss surrounds himself with tough and loyal people, and if those around him aren't that bright, then it lessens the chance of them being a threat to his power. Later in the FBI file, the informant outlines Joe Gallo's views on Mafia sit-downs. The file states, Joe Gallo has, according to the source, stated that neither he nor his brother Albert will attend any sit-downs to discuss the future of the Colombo family or any other organised crime matters unless the sit-down is held on President Street. Joe Gallo states, people who run off to sit-downs always risk treachery and, as an example, points out his brother Larry going to the Sahara Lounge, against Joe Gallo's advice, Joe claims, according to the source, and the disappearance of Sally D'Ambrosio, Anthony Strollo, and numerous others who thought they were merely going to sit down for conversation and ended up dead. From his time in the life, Joey Gallo has evidently grown wary of Mafia sit-downs and refuses to attend one unless it is on his home turf on President Street. As the file mentions, during the First Colombo War in the early 1960s, 
Crazy Joe's brother, Larry Gallo, the then leader of the Gallo crew, attended a sit-down and was ambushed and was lucky to survive. Joe Gallo then lists other mobsters, such as feared Colombo-made man Sally D'Ambrosio, as well as Genovese mobster Anthony Strollo, whose bodies have never been discovered. The file continues. Joe Gallo has also said that Joe Jelly was stupid to trust Sally D years ago, and he too ended up dead. Gallo's reasoning appears to be, if the meet or sit-down is scheduled for anywhere except home turf, then you send one of your lesser guys just to hear the proposition on the theory the other side will not hit or kidnap a lesser guy, as this would tip their hand. The Joe Jelly that Gallo refers to was Joseph Joe Jelly Gielli, a tough member of the Gallo crew, who was killed, allegedly, by Sally D'Ambrosio during the first gallo profacci conflict. Joe Jelly's death was the inspiration for the famous Sleeping with the Fishes line in The Godfather Part 1. According to the informant, Joe Gallo then states that if a sit-down can't be avoided, then the lower-level mobster should be sent, as there is less chance he would be killed, as he wouldn't be the intended target for a betrayal or ambush. As mentioned toward the start of the video, after Joe Colombo was shot, there were those who talked about another war between the Gallows and the Colombos. But the informant stated that the Gallo crew did not want this to happen. The FBI file reports, The Gallo crew does not want a war and will do nothing to start one. They just want to be left alone in their section of Brooklyn and want nothing to do with any of the so-called boss or bosses. According to the source, Joe Gallo has recently been heard to state words to the effect, we don't need no mafia, la cosa nostra, buttons, or any of that shit. I'll operate by myself, and then there is no one to share with. As we know, 10 years before this, in the early 1960s, the Gallo crew had been involved in a bloody war, and from the sounds of it, just wanted to be left alone to operate independently. It also appears that Joey Gallo, who had just spent the best part of a decade in prison, had completely given up on the Cosa Nostra life, allegedly saying, we don't need no mafia, la Cosa Nostra, buttons or any of that shit. Despite the informant stating that he didn't believe a war would break out between the Gallos and the Columbos, after Joe Gallo was murdered the following year in 1972, tensions did escalate, leading to what is now known as the Second Colombo War. Interestingly, some speculate that the informant who provided this information was in fact Crazy Joe's brother, Albert Kid Blast Gallo. If this is in fact true, then he followed in his brother Larry's footsteps who also provided information to the FBI nearly a decade before. Let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments below. I hope you found some of that interesting. Thanks for watching.